Hello friends, once again welcome on our YouTube channel. Today we will starting, today we are starting the classical mechanics. This is a paper of MSc Physics. It may be possible that you feel some difficulty in this paper because you may be from Hindi background but in MSc we will discuss whole thing in English. Other papers, quantum mechanics, electronics, and another one you have already read in our in your previous classes, but this is a little bit new for you. <coughs> so let me start classical mechanics. We are starting from conservation laws. What are conservation laws? How many types of conservation laws are there and how you will treat from them? So there may be number of conservation laws, but here we are mainly discuss about three conservation laws. First one is conservation of linear momentum. Second is conservation of angular momentum. And third one is conservation of energy. Conservation of linear momentum Schaeff states that in the absence of external force the total linear momentum of the system remains constant. And what is linear momentum? Linear momentum is the product of mass and velocity. Similarly, in case of conservation of angular momentum we use torque in place of force and this conservation law states that in the absence of external torque the total angular momentum of the system remains constant. Linear momentum or linear force provides the uh, linear motion to the body whereas Torque provides the angular motion to a body. And third one is our conservation of energy. What is conservation of energy? Conservation of energy shows that the total energy of an isolated system remains constant. It means energy neither be created nor be destroyed, but it can transfer from one form to another form. This whole thing we will discuss in our this lecture. Now first of all conservation of linear momentum. Conservation of linear momentum states that in the absence of external force the total linear momentum of the system remains constant. So if there is no external force then the total linear momentum will be constant. Now here we are showing a system. This is a particle represented by I. Its position vector is Ri. This is another particle represented by J and its position vector is Rj. Now linear momentum of ith particle is Pi is equal to Mi into Vi. What is Mi? Mi is the mass of ith particle and what is Vi? Vi is the velocity of ith particle. And the product of mass and velocity is known as our linear momentum. So Pi is equal to Mi into Vi. Pi is the linear momentum of ith particle. Now applied force on ith particle. Applied force or external force is Fi applied. Fi applied is the applied force on ith particle. 
internal force on ith particle due to jth particle since we know every particle apply an internal force to the another particle so internal force <coughs> sorry so internal force on ith particle due to jth particle is fji <coughs> so this is applied force on ith particle and this is internal force on ith particle due to jth particle and if we add these two forces then we get the total force on the ith particle now from newton's second law there are three laws which was given by newton first law is our law of inertia which states that if a body is stationary then it will remain stationary and if a body is moving then it will move with the same velocity in same direction until and unless we apply an external force on this body what is newton's second law newton's second law provide the definition of force according to this law the force is directly proportional to rate of change of linear momentum and newton's third law is action reaction law which states that to every action there is an equal and opposite reaction all these three laws you can read in our youtube lecture newton's laws of motion now here we apply newton's second law from newton's second law f j i plus f i is equal to p i dot f is equal to dp by dt and dp by dt means p dot here we are dealing to ith particle so this is the force on ith particle pi dot this is inter external force on ith particle and this is internal force on ith particle due to jth particle so fji plus fi applied represents the total force and according to newton's second law total force is equal to dp by dt so we use this equation here now p is equal to mv so p i dot is equal to d by dt of m i into v i v i is a linear velocity on ith particle since m is mass of particle and here mass remains constant so the differential of mass will be zero so m is our constant so we take m i out of this d by dt so m i d by dt of v i and v i means velocity which is rate of change of position. So V i is represented by d r i by dt. Here r i is the position vector on ith particle. So P i dot is equal to M i d by dt of d r i upon dt. And this will be d to r i by dt to all p i dot is equal to d2 by dt2 of m i r i so this is p i dot now let all the internal forces 
obey the Newton's third law. Newton's third law means action reaction law, which states that to every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. So let all the internal forces obey the Newton's third law. It means if Fji is the internal force on ith particle due to jth particle, then Fij will be the internal force on the jth particle due to ith particle. And Fij and Fji both will be equal in magnitude and opposite in direction. So Fij is equal to minus Fji. So Fji is equal to minus Fij. Now, this equation we already obtained. This is from Newton's second law. For whole system, this is only on ith particle. For whole system, we use summation sign. So sigma i j, i is not equal to j, f j i plus sigma i, f i applied is equal to sigma i p i dot. So we just use sigma i in this equation. So this equation will be converted into this equation and i is not equal to j. Since no particle apply internal force on own. But pi dot is equal to d2 by dt2 of miri. So we substitute this value from here to here. So sigma i j i is not equal to j f j i plus sigma i f i applied is equal to d2 by dt2 of sigma i m i r i. So we substitute the value of p i dot here from this equation. Here sigma i j i is not equal to j f j i is the total internal force on the system. So this is the total internal force. Now f j i is equal to minus f i j from Newton's third law. So f i j plus f j i is equal to zero. Or this can be written as sigma i j i is not equal to j f j i is equal to zero. Means total internal force on the system is zero. Now we have this equation. And this is 0. So if we replace this by 0, then sigma i f i applied is equal to d2 by dt2 of sigma i m i r i. Now, from the definition of center of mass, the position vector of center of mass is given by r is equal to sigma i m i r i divided by sigma i m i. This represents the total mass of the body and if we replace it by capital M then capital R is equal to sigma i m i r i divided by m where m is the total mass of the system which is actually sigma i m i now if we cross multiply this then sigma i 
m i r i is equal to m into r which we represent here so sigma i m i r i is equal to m r now this equation we already derived and this is our another equation so we replace this sigma i m i r i by capital m into r so sigma i f i applied is equal to capital m d2 r upon d2 2 so this is the total external force or total applied force on the system now total linear momentum of the system p is equal to sigma i m i v i this is our total linear momentum or v i means d r i by d t since the rate of change of position is known as velocity so v i is replaced by d r i by d t so p is equal to sigma i m i d r i by d t and this is equal to d by d t of sigma i m i r i since m is constant but sigma i m i r i is equal to m into r so p is equal to d by dt of m r so p equals to m d r by dt so this is the total linear momentum of the system now if total external force acting on the center of mass is zero then sigma i f i applied is equal to zero since total external force is zero now sigma i f i applied is equal to zero we put here then m d2 r upon dt2 is equal to 0 since m dr by dt is equal to p so m d2 r upon dt2 is equal to p dot it means d by dt of p equals to 0 or p dot equals to 0 p dot means rate of change of linear momentum And if BP by DT is equal to 0, then P equals to constant. Since differential of any constant quantity is 0. So if total external force acting on the center of mass is 0, then total linear momentum of the system remains constant. So sigma I Fi applied is equal to 0. So p equal to 0, p equal to constant, p equals to constant, it means in the absence of external force, the total linear momentum of the system remains constant. This is our conservation of linear momentum. So here we end our session. In this lecture, we just studied about conservation of linear momentum conservation of angular momentum and conservation of energy we will discuss in our next lecture so goodbye